Hello, my name is John Muniz, and I'm a member of the Millbury Historical Society. This year, the Millbury Historical Society is celebrating its 50th anniversary, founded in 1970 by John Bricardo and a group of concerned Millbury residents who wanted to preserve the history of Millbury. Well, it comes to pass that they were trying to save the 16 Mile House, and they couldn't do it. That fell through. So, for, for our 50 years, we have been saving and conserving the great history of Millbrae for generations. This is the Millbrae Museum. The Millbrae Museum was placed here in 1985 by the Millbrae Historical Society, the County of San Mateo, and the City of Millbrae. As I mentioned, the Millbrae Historical Society is a 5013C nonprofit corporation dedicated to preserving the history of Millbrae. We are composed of 133 volunteers. We don't get paid, we just dose it in the museum. We have three museums, all located in Millbrae. We have the Millbrae Historical Society Museum. In the rear, we have the Millbrae Carriage House that was built on that site in, in 2016. And we also have the Millbrae Railroad Museum down on California Drive and Murchison Drive. Of course, that was the old Southern Pacific Station that was built in 1907. Preserved today for railroad buffs to come on down and check out the great history of railroading on the peninsula. The house that now houses the Millbrae Museum was built in 1898 at 1275 Broadway just south of Ludeman Lane. It was one of two built by the Spring Valley Water Company in Millbrae to house its superintendents and their families. Sometime between 1908 and 1925, Superintendent of the Water Division, William Babcock Lawrence and his wife, Emma, lived in one of these houses. Lawrence was a larger than life figure in the Spring Valley Water Company, and both he and his father were key to its development. In 1930, the Spring Valley Water Company sold its assets to the San Francisco Water Department and became an investment business. The Spring Valley Company Limited was finally dissolved around 1952 and the building eventually fell into disrepair. The house was slated for demolition in order to make way for the Green Hills Retirement Center and the Millbrae Historical Society mobilized its membership and the entire community to save the building from the wrecking ball. The building was jacked up and rolled down the street to its current location next to the Millbrae Library in January of 1985. After over two years of restoration and exhibit installation by community volunteers, the Millbrae Museum opened to the public in April 1987 as the first of three museums the Historical Society now runs. The Masolo Building located on El Camino Real at La Cruz Avenue, was built by Antonio Masolo during the Great Depression and completed in 1932. The Masolo family is one of the prominent families in early Millbrae history. Antonio raised crops and grew flowers on 20 acres of the silver tract portion of the Burry Burry Rancho that he rented from the Spring Valley Water Company, starting in 1902, with water supplied from the reservoir where Green Hills Elementary School now stands, which was fed by a derrick-like water, water overflow valve near where St. Dunstan's Church and McDonald's now stand. His sons Mel and Silvio were successful businessmen in Millbrae, and Mel served as Millbrae's mayor in 1952 to 1953 and 1957 through 1958. The building was designed by renowned architect Charles Fantoni, designer of St. Saint, Peter and Paul Church in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood. In spite of the rough economic times, Mazzello had the building constructed with quality materials and intricate detailing, and optimistically had it designed to accommodate a third floor and an elevator, which were never built. The building houses retail establishments on the ground floor, with offices and apartments located on the second floor. Hello, everyone. My name is David Masolo. I'm the grandson of the fellow who had this building constructed in 1932. His name was Antonio Masolo. I don't know if you can see his picture right here. And um, 
he basically came to Millbrae in 1902 and was a farmer and farmed the property where the Millbrae Square is. And uh, he grew vegetables, grew flowers, and later on he processed seeds, seeds and sold seeds to uh, all the farmers around the area. And that's basically how my mother and father met. So my grandfather was a farmer in South San Francisco, and my grandfather here was a farmer in Millbrae, and they met uh, when they were processing seed, not processing seeds, but when he was buying seeds from my other grandfather. Um, let's see. Uh, this building, I was, I lived in this building for the first three years of my life, from 1947 to 1950, and these stairs used to scare the living hell out of me and because they just seemed so steep, so I had to come down on my butt when I was a kid. But, you know, it took me a while to get down, but that was the way I wanted to go. Um, I've probably been working on this building since I was 16 years old. In the summer times and when uh, out of school, they always gave me some project to do here. And uh, I'd climb in the light wells and all that kind of stuff and fix things, and, but now I'm I'm at the point where I get someone else to do it because I, don't, I want to be able to get out of the light well once I got in there. Uh, we finally have, after the um, years, we have the whole upstairs offices all rented out. So it's kind of like to the way it was back in the 30s. The Alfred F. Green House, located at 1 Lewis Avenue, is the oldest surviving house in Millbrae. The house was built in 1865 for Mr. Green and his wife Mary, who moved to Millbrae from San Bruno that same year. Green ran the dairy operations for the Millbrae Dairy in partnership with Darius Ogden Mills for 20 years. Green managed the Mills estate whenever Mr. Mills was away from home for an extended period. Alfred Green was also a key figure in the Spring Valley Water Company, a superintendent for the construction of the Crystal Springs Dam in San Mateo. Alfred and Mary Green raised five children in the home. Green was also a successful politician, serving on the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors for 30 years and elected to a single term in the state of California legislature. Alfred Green died in late December 1909 at his home, just a few blocks away from where Darius Ogden Mills died at his mansion on January 3rd, 1910. Well, my name is uh, David Rolandelli. Uh, my grandparents uh, bought this house from the Green family around 1929 and it was stayed in the family uh, until 1970. Uh, some of my early recollections, of course, are as, as a child. And um, usually on Sundays we would come here for, for, for dinner. Um, my, my grandparents, being good Italian grandparents, always made wonderful Italian meals. And I remember so many times sitting, sitting in, the, in the kitchen here in the house. Uh, some of my earlier memories, especially as a child, were uh, just the, the enormity of the house. Being a child, uh, things always seem maybe bigger than they, than they certainly appear when we're adults. I remember going up into the second floor of the house, which at the time always seemed like such an adventure because it was so big and, 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 and so I always wanted to go up with, with, uh, with, with my parents or somebody. Um, one of the things that was really fascinating though was going into the attic of this house. It was a long steep staircase up into the attic which was which was unfinished at the time and there was very little up there actually it was just very dark and, 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 and dusty there were some picture frames that were kind of leaning against the wall and some of which uh, I know we've donated in subsequent years to the Millbury Historical Society there was also a room up there and apparently as once at one time prior to my family's buying the house was a was a, 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 a servants quarters there was a bed uh, there was a bookcase and uh, I believe it was my, a dresser and while the, the, it was just the framing it was uh, it was covered with like a canvas like uh, a, a fabric. There were many books on the on, on the bookshelves, some uh, old U.S. Department of Agriculture yearbooks dating back to the late 19th century, old California state law books from the 1880s, some scrapbooks, fun, uh, one was a teacher's scrapbook and all her students work was in this scrapbook dating it was dated the night in the 1890s. There was also uh, Mrs. Green's personal scrapbook with clippings in it, pressed leaves, and so forth. Uh, again, the Millbrae Historical Society now has, the, has these items. Um, but it was always an adventure going up there. And we used to just to love to come here. At the time, there was also 
this there was just this this lot, but also three other lots on, on both sides of, of the house. And it was it was great fun just to, to be able to turn it around on the grounds. Uh, there was an old barn here located on the property, um, and, and finding old artifacts. There was an old coachman's seat that, that uh, we found, an old coachman's suit that was actually hanging on a hook. Uh, old uh, square nails I once found on the on the upper floor of the uh, of the, the hayloft of the attic, and I still actually still have those. But it was a it was always a wonderful it was always a wonderful time coming here and spending time with our grandparents and and our aunts because my dad and my aunts of course they were born in San Francisco but grew up here here in in, in Millbrae. Um, but those are some of the recollections I have, and they were really fond memories, and I always treasure those. My name is Dean and I am the current owner of One Lewis Avenue. My wife and I uh, started looking for a house to purchase back in 2015. At the time we had a two-year-old and um, our daughter was on the way and so we needed more space and at the just with the Bay Area housing prices, it was ridiculous to look for any type of new construction or even a sort of a space for a growing family. And so I had seen the house come up on the listings and on a whim showed it to my wife and she kind of looked at it and said, this wasn't kind of what I imagined as a forever home. So we kind of tucked it away to the side two months later the house was still on the market and I thought hey you know I think there's an open house coming up my son and I were uh, out walking we had passed Central Park and uh, he needed to go to the restroom and being far away from where we were living at the time I said hey I think there's an open house and I took my son who at the time was uh, who was five um, along Millbury Avenue and then right across to Lewis Avenue and we saw Jean Joe, our realtor and uh, the, the sales agent and said that we've got an emergency can we use your restroom so she kindly let us go up the stairs and that was the first time I saw the house and unfortunately it was a mere couple seconds that I could absorb it because I had to rush my son up to the second floor, pass all of the wonderful woodwork and trim, and into the dedicated wash closet, the, uh, the toilet room. And so we did uh, make it in time, and then came down and saw there was a bunch of people just uh, marveling at all of the details in the house. And I think at that moment, once the emergency had passed with my son, I was like, this is the one. I think we have to make an effort. Um, so while we came down and looked around at the property of the house, we, we heard the other buyers on site and all they were whispering and talking about was how much they could get for raising the structure and redeveloping it into a uh, duplex or a triplex. And I told my son, as wise as he was at age five, that hey, we've got to do everything we could to uh, save this 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 home. And so um, I think from that period on, we realized that it wasn't about a new building or a new structure. I think it was really a place that you felt like it was uh, where you belonged. And so we have poured in all of our resources and efforts to slowly bring the house back to its former glory. Uh, we've updated pretty much all of the major systems and uh, we're looking forward to moving in hopefully at the end of this year and have more to show. Railroad service to Millbrae began on September 14, 1863 with the stop officially listed in timetables as the 17 Mile House named after the stagecoach stop one block west of the tracks. By 1866, a dedicated depot had been built by the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad, supposedly of adobe, but it burned down in a fire during July of 1890 in just 45 minutes. In 1870, Southern Pacific completed its takeover of the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad. In November of 1890, the depot's replacement was built by the Southern Pacific, but it again burned to the ground in a 1906 fire caused by an explosion of a, a powder-laden car on the siding. The 
post office was then moved into a new grocery store with the name of Lauer and Lovegreen, where Peter's Cafe now stands. In 1907, Southern Pacific built the present building in the colonial revival style, one of about 30 of that type and the only two-story example, owing to the lack of nearby houses for the station master to rent. Sometime later, a freight shed was built south of the depot, but it was demolished in the 1960s. On September 5, 1976, the Milbrae Historical Society dedicated its marker number three in a civic ceremony with Milbrae and Southern Pacific officials present. This building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on September 1, 1978. In 1980, the depot was moved 200 feet south to its present location, where it continued to serve railroad passengers until 2003, when the new BART Caltrain Samtrans Intermodal Station was built. Since 2004, it has been home to the Milbrae Train Museum. Hello, I'm Milbrae Avern Bruce from the Milbrae Historical Society and the Train Museum Director here for the Milbrae Train Museum located on California Drive in Milbrae. In any event, uh, we have many different things here on display. We basically uh, are focusing on the history of railroading through Milbrae and on the peninsula and uh, also throughout the Bay Area. We have to that end, we have someone who used to live here in Milbrae, passed away about uh, 13 years ago, and that was uh, William Tomford. Uh, he actually designed the hydro cushion here pretty much from his home in Milbrae and uh, got this award for uh, designing that. That was a very well-known and uh, well-used uh, well uh, system by many different railroads. And also we have a railroad car from the city of San Francisco. That was a train that went from San Francisco to Chicago. Would have been the premium train that we would have taken over that route. And uh, that is a Pullman full-size sleeping car. We have 10 different bedrooms inside of it, of which are uh, the highest accommodations that they had in the day, drawing rooms, compartments, and double bedrooms. So uh, all I can tell you is, I highly recommend coming to our museum, even if you're not that interested in trains, because we've got almost everything related to train travel in and around and through Millbrae. Thank you.